All right, well, let's get started this morning. I want to continue and wrap up the series that we've been talking about, and it's restoration, and it's the restoration of life. The Bible says that restoration is to bring back to life, and we know this, that God in his heart decided that I need to restore the relationship I have with mankind. You and I both know that Adam and Eve made a big mistake in the garden, and when God talked to Eve, Eve said, the devil made me do it, and that's why we all use that excuse when we get in trouble. And then when God talked to Adam, he said, what's going on? How come you disobeyed me? He said, it's that wife you gave me. It's all her fault, and that's what's going on. And in that moment, the relationship between mankind and God was fractured, and it wasn't going well, and it began to decay. Because, see, the choice for Adam and Eve was, do I want to be like God or do I want to be with God? And they chose I want to be like God. And that means they grabbed the apple and said, listen, I, I kind of want to isolate, be my own person and do my own thing. And it sounds good off the top of our head, right? I can do my own thing, make my own decisions. But how many of you know when you make your own decisions and you're in charge of your own life, it can get to be a, a crazy train wreck at some point? How many of you have ever been to a junkyard and you've seen a bunch of old cars? How many have gone through the junkyard looking for a car to purchase because you just love it so much? Okay, nobody. All right. There you go. You just go in there and you're just going, this is like, this is bad. All of these cars had a relationship with somebody somewhere long ago and that just began to fall apart and they're a wreck. Now, when you go to junkyard today, what do you do? You just get a piece of the car, and you go back, and you patch up your other car that must be old because there's a car in the junkyard. It's old, so your car is old. So we're stealing pieces off of these cars, and they're just just falling apart. And this morning, we've used this restoration idea and kind of matched it up with the metaphor of a car. When you buy a car, you start a relationship with it. And then that car decides to do what it wants to do all by itself. It doesn't want to be with you. It just wants to decay, dilapidate, break down, and cost you millions of dollars. And at some point, you decided, I don't like this relationship anymore, and you send them to the junkyard. And it's over with, and they're there. But imagine that the God of heaven is perusing the junkyard of this world, and he finds you, your old broken down car that you are, And you've fallen apart, and life's not good, and you are isolated all alone, being like God instead of being with God. God walks through the junkyard, and he says, I think I want you. And he's going, man, I'm at the worst point in my life. I mean, there was days earlier on that I was pretty good, and I could see you picking me then, but like right now, I'm a mess. And the Lord said, no. The first, the first thing about restoration is that God purposed to restore a relationship with you and I. No matter what junkyard you get into, no matter how far you've fallen apart, God made and purposed, God purposed in his heart to restore the relationship that got fractured by Adam and Eve. And so then in that process, Jesus steps up and says, well, somebody's got to pay for all the, the work that's got to be done. If you've ever gotten an old project or an old lamp or some kind of uh, chest of drawers or a car, and you ever try to restore it, it takes dedication, right? You, you have to purpose in your heart to kind of see the beauty that you can't see in the moment, but you've, you've got this dream about restoring this, this, this ice chest or, 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 I should say, a dresser drawer, and you've got you to gotta sand it down, and you've got to do all these things. Same thing with a car, and, 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 you know, a husband will come home with this, this junk, and he will tell you, no, it's not junk. It just looks like junk, and I paid serious money for this junk, and you're going, you paid serious money for this car, but in his heart, there's this dream. The relationship has been started because he had this purpose in his heart to get the car, Jesus comes up and says, I'll pay. And the minute you purchase it, you take that junk and you stick it in your car. And then it becomes this, um, this hole that sucks all the money out of your account, right? <laughs> because a husband wants to spend all his money on this car. 
and he wants to fix it up. And of course, sometimes the spouse is saying, I'm not sure, I'm not seeing it, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> so this whole process goes on, and Jesus says, listen, I will pay whatever it takes to restore the relationship between us and God. And so we talked about that on Easter, and Jesus dies, and he raises from the dead on the third day. And then, then when Jesus is just getting ready to go to heaven, he's getting ready to leave, he goes, so listen, um, God wanted to turn this around and start a relationship with you, restore it. He says, I paid for it. I paid for all the penalty of sins. So that's been paid for because you can't go into the presence of God without being uh, clean, washed clean. You can't go before the presence of God having sin in your life. So that's got to be paid for in order for you to, to walk into his presence and talk with him. Your wrongdoings have to be settled. It has to be your debt has to be paid before you can walk in the room and Jesus pays the debt. And then the Holy Spirit says, listen, I'm going to help protect the relationship. So Jesus pays for the Holy uh, the pays for the relationship. God uh, purposed the relationship and the Holy Spirit says, I will protect the relationship. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. I remember when me and Rachel decided to purchase this old Mustang, and we got it five or six years ago. In my mind, I thought it could be done in about three years. We could restore it. But you work really, really hard, and then you run out of money. And then you work harder, and you run out of more money. And, and you just want it to go fast. You just want to get it all fixed. You know, the, our, our Heavenly Father says, I love you. Jesus paid for the relationship to get started. You are now owned by our Heavenly Father. He owned you. But how many of you know there's still like some rough edges? Amen. There's some things that got to be worked on. But here's, if you're like me, it's like, this car is beautiful. I, in my mind, I know what it can look like. And I want to get it looking pretty. And I want it on the road as fast as possible. So fast that I would like to take some shortcuts. How many of you have ever tried to take shortcuts? You know, the shortcuts will get you in trouble, right? And then your shortcut becomes a long cu cut. <laughs> and then your wife says, you have no idea where you're going. Just listen to the series and quit fighting with her. Amen. That's what she says. So I'm sitting here and we're working on this car. And I just want to get it going. And I, I'm tired of it looking ugly. So me and her have sanded it down. And we had to pay somebody to do the body work. Because I can do almost anything, but I can't do body work. And so we get the body work done, but, but it's real, really important that when you start, you purchase something that becomes yours and you own it and you start this relationship to work on first things first. How many of you know that? You have to work on first things first. There needs to be a foundation. God says to you and, and me this morning that, that we, we start this relationship. It's paid for, and Jesus has promised that this relationship can never end, but you need help. From here to heaven. And the Holy Spirit wants to protect the journey that you and I have from here to heaven. And there's a lot of things that he needs to work on inside of you and work on inside of me. That if, if you're like me, I, I just kind of don't, don't want to work on that one. You know, let's just get going. Let's go over here and work on this one. You know, I, I just I want to get out there. You know, I want to do something great for you, God. And let's just get out there and start doing something amazing. And he goes, yeah, we got to work on your character. Nah, let's not work on that. <laughs> that you know, I've got plenty of character. Just ask my wife. Yeah, he goes, that's the problem right there. You, your character. We got You need a foundation. A foundation. I don't want a foundation. Let's just get going. And he says, no, healthy relationships that are going to maintain for a love for a lifetime. And this is true of a marriage. This is true of a relationship with your children. If you're going to have a relationship that's a love for a lifetime, there are these foundational things that have to be worked on. And so I'm working on this car. I'm excited about it. We're getting close, and I decide to hurry up and get the body work. We're going to get it pretty, and we're going to take it for a drive. So we, we do the body work. I didn't get it painted, but we did all the body work, and I knew there was all this mechanical stuff I needed to work on. But I thought, you know, we'll just wait. Let's just do it. I just want to drive this thing. I just can't wait. So we, we were pulling it into the garage, and I was in our garage. You have to go uphill and get into the garage. Then you got to hit the brakes so you don't go to the back of the garage and hit the back wall. And I, I give it a little bit of gas, 
And uh, I've just gotten this guy to do all the body work. It's perfect. I just, in a week or two, I can take it to paint. And I get, give it a little bit of gas, get over the hump, get into the garage, and I go to hit the brakes, and I hear this clunk. And the, the rear brakes on the back two side completely fell out, landed on the inside of the wheel, and I just went, no, no. It's like slow motion, no, as I'm traveling right into the back brick wall of the garage. And it hit, and it messed it all up. I cried. <laughs> I was kicking things. I hurt my big toe. We won't talk about that. Um, I was just so upset because I, I kind of wanted to jump ahead. I just kind of wanted God to restore things the way I want it done. I wanted the Holy Spirit. I want him to, to just help me jump ahead real quick. And he says, no, there's first things first that have to be worked on. You know, had I worked on the brakes, duh, <laughs> if I had worked on the brakes first, the most important thing is that a car stops when you want it to stop. Can you say amen? If I had worked on that first with the Lord, if you will, I would have never had that problem. But I, I just kind of didn't want to work on that area. I kind of wanted to work on the areas that I wanted. And in that moment, if I'm not careful, I'm slipping back to the same apple problem that Adam and Eve had. And that problem is, I think I know what's best for this car. I don't need to read the instructions. I don't need to work on the brakes. Let's just, it's fine. I mean, how bad could it be? I could hit the emergency brake, blah, blah, blah. And I start deciding that I know what's best for me. And here's the thing about the Holy Spirit who protects a relationship. He goes, so listen, I'm going to help you out. You can work with me, or you can crash this car in the back of your garage, and then you can listen to me. And the Holy Spirit will never say, I told you so, but deep down, you know he told you so. <laughs> he told you so. And so the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, listen, I, I must go away so I can send you the protector of the relationship you, you have with the Lord. I must go away. Jesus said, it's I know you guys want me to stay. I've risen from the dead. He rose from the dead three days after he was crucified. He traveled the world for 40 days. He traveled the countryside for 40 days, uh, resurrected from the dead, talking to all of his friends. And, and, and right at the end, he's going to go up to heaven. He says, I must go away. I know you want me, but I'm going to give the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will protect every one of you. It will, it will be as if you have God with you on the inside of you from here on forward, and he will be the one to protect you. And so our relationship with God is protected by the help of the Holy Spirit. And the question to you this morning is, do you know that? Do you listen to the Holy Spirit? And if you're struggling in your relationship with God, you need his help. The Holy Spirit is described as an advocate. I think the Greek word is paraclete, one who, who is like a lawyer who stands in your defense and defends you and helps you through the process of life. And we get that from the scriptures. And when we go into uh, John 16, 5 through 9, Jesus is talking to the disciples. And I think I have a slide for that. John 16, 5 through 9. Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he says, so listen. He goes, uh, but I'm going away to the one who sent me. So I'm going back to my father, and not one of you is asking, where are you going? Instead, you're grieving because what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate, everybody say advocate, the Holy Spirit won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sins. So he'll protect you. He'll tell you what will get you into trouble and what won't. And of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. And the world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Anything that leads you in the direction of refusing to believe in God, which is what happened with Adam and Eve. They, were, they said, I want to be like God instead of being with God. God said, don't eat from the tree, but I've decided I don't believe God, so I'm going to eat the apple. And the Holy Spirit comes to tell you, I know this sounds good, this choice, this life choice you're making, but it's not. 
Have you ever had the Holy Spirit? Have you ever asked the Holy Spirit about a difficult choice? You know, we make difficult choices when we're single, like, Lord, is this girl the right girl for me? I mean, if you ask me, she's stunning, she's beautiful. I think I want two scoops, this one right here. <laughs> and sometimes God says, yeah, I know she looks good, but dude, her character is bad. Yeah, you know, she's pretty on the outside. I think we can, we can work through the character thing. He goes, no, you can't. She's going to dump you in a couple of years, and she'll be on to the next one. Or the husband. See, these are the things that are so difficult. And the Holy Spirit says, I want to give you a person for a love for a lifetime. Will you do it my way? Really? So I got to look. We got to cut her loose or him loose? Yeah, that's not the one. See, the Holy Spirit says, I, I want to protect you. I want to give you a love for a lifetime. I don't want you back in, in, in talking with me in a, an emotional mess because you chose somebody to go out with who just dumped you and left you for dead. And the Holy Spirit says, I want to protect you. Jesus says he's our protector. Titus 3, 4, it says this. When God our Savior revealed his kindness and his love, he saved us. Not because of the righteous things we have done, because we were a car that was broken down, and we tried to do life ourselves, and we ended up in a junkyard. But because of his mercy, because of God's mercy, he washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life. Everybody say a new life. New life. Through the what? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit... Uh, gives life to your spirit. The Bible says that when you are born again, one of the one disciples said, well, how can I be born again? I mean, I can't go back to my mother's womb. What, what does that all mean? And Jesus said, listen, you're born of the spirit. So your spirit was in the junkyard. It died. Your batteries were dead. And you needed a new ever, you know, Duracell battery in your car. And uh, in the Holy Spirit comes and gives your spirit new life. So your spirit inside, you're made of body, soul, and spirit, okay? So that's the three parts of who you are. And you, 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 your spirit was working isolated all by yourself, trying to make all of life decisions by yourself, and it was falling apart. But when we become a child of the Most High God, the Holy Spirit comes and gives our spirit a new life. It's now I, I see life different. My perspective on the decision-making process in life has changed. How many of you would say since you've met the Lord and asked him in your life, you view life differently and you're asking for his help? Yeah. In your dating life, in your financial life, in your relational life. You know, when I started doing relationships God's way, by the, the spirit inside of me that was given new life, the Holy Spirit says, listen, I want you to go ask him to forgive you. Well, man, my old spirit said, no, man, they're coming first. They're like, you know, they're 95% of this problem. I'm only like 5% of the problem. I'm waiting until they come first. Holy Spirit says that's not the way we work. I want you to do, be the initiator of reconciliation and fixing this relationship. But it ain't fair. <laughs> right? That's, it ain't fair. And my old spirit is having this fight with the Holy Spirit inside of me. And we're going back and forth on how we should handle this. And the Holy Spirit says, do you want me to protect you? Do you want me to restore things so things are good? Then do it my way. The next verse in 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. So the restoration process that is being protected. So I'm being protected from moving back towards the junkyard or I'm moving to the showroom floor. I'm going to the junkyard or the showroom floor depending on on how well I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to protect me. And when I allow him, there's one word that allows you to continue to be restored. And that word is obedience. So say it. Isn't it it's not even a good word. You don't even like saying it, do you? Why is that? It's like, like your mom says, you must obey me. And she's like, oh, don't use that word. But, but say, say obedience. Now, the truth is, if you're near high voltage and somebody's an electrician and they tell you how to be safe around high voltage, I bet all of us will be obedient, right? Here's the problem. When you're in an area where you think you know more than the electrician, when you don't. See, the Holy Spirit knows more than you. He knows. 
He's asking you to be obedient because it will be what's best for you. And the only time we get in trouble is when we decide, I think I know what's best for me. And we're back to grabbing the apple again, right? The Holy Spirit wants to protect us. Now, here's what happens. I'm going to read this verse. And this is Galatians. And this talks about doing life when my spirit decides I want to be like God instead of with God. And I start making my choices, what I want, without the Holy Spirit's protection. And then at the end, it's going to say, here's what happens at this verse. When you do walk in obedience to the Holy Spirit, and when you hear what the fruit of the protection of the Holy Spirit looks like in your life, you'll go, man, I want two scoops of that. that that's phenomenal. So let's read it. It's in Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, and this is the, one of the most amazing books of all the Bible. I mean, they're all amazing, but if, if, you, if I had to encourage you to memorize, there's several verses in the Bible, but one of the most important verses is Galatians 5, 20 and 21. It's at the end of this. When we get there, I would encourage you when you go home to memorize this verse. But let's start. We're going to look at verse 16, uh, and we're going to move from there. Now, listen to what happens. It says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Everybody say guide. So a guide is one who takes you in the right direction and protects you. Now, if I do this, this is what will happen. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. So I'm adopted by God. I'm his son. Jesus paid for everything for the relationship to get started. The relationship is back together and it's secure. God has adopted me. He's not kicking me to the curb. But I still got issues. My spirit wants to have a, a fight with the Holy Spirit because I'm brand new to the relationship. Have you ever been brand new to a relationship? Have you ever dated somebody, and after two weeks you go, ooh, out, I, okay, I didn't see that on the first date, I'm making a list, this is not acceptable, third date, I, I, I'm sick, I can't seem to go out, and you dump them, right? There's time, so the relationship started, the Holy Spirit wants to protect, and he wants to help you and I grow as a son or a daughter. So this is what happens, the sinful nature Wants to do evil. So there's something inside of me. Have you ever just wanted to strangle the driver next to you? Amen. How many of you talk when you drive at the people that are going by? They can't hear you. But yet somehow you're letting, you're venting out your issues. I have a child like that. They're driving down the road. And when they're on the cell phone and they've got on speaker, they're sitting there. They're driving. And then they're like, you idiot, what are you doing? And it's like, did they hear anything you just said? You know. And we, we, we vent all these stuff, right? So we have inside of us, like there's one part of me wants to choke them, and there's another part of me that wants to forgive them, right? But it depending on the moment, I, I might be heavy on the choking or heavy on the forgiving, and the battle rages within me, and the Holy Spirit says, I'm going to protect you from doing something stupid, so be quiet, sit down, and don't run them off the road. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Jesus, I will drive respectfully, even if they don't, and I pray you punish them severely for all their issues. Amen. Okay. And then the Holy Spirit says, you shouldn't think like that. <laughs> the verse goes on to say, and the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. See, these two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Holy Spirit, everybody should di say directed. So he guides, he directs, he, and in that direction there's protection. You are not under the obligation of the law of Moses. So what is he saying? When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, here's what happens. Here's the results. The results are very clear. We see it all around us. There's sexual immorality. There's impurity. There's lustful pleasures. All of this is selfishness. I want to do life my way. Idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger. Nobody here has ever done that. But for the other people in the other churches, yes. Uh, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy. Drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like 
these. So you and I know that if we follow our selfish desires, that's where we're going to end up. But listen to this. But let me tell you again, as I have before, and this is the writer Paul, and he's he's talking to those in, in the Galatian church. He said, let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. They'll, if you will, stay in the junkyard forever. The Lord's pulled you out. You're in his garage. And he's slowly working on you. This verse is not to try to condemn you that because you're not perfect, you know, like one week I'm going to heaven, but I had a bad week and probably at the end of this week I'm not going to heaven. No, you've already been yanked out of the junkyard. You're in God's garage, but you don't want to head back towards the junkyard. You don't want to just stay in that broken condition. The Holy Spirit says, I'm going to restore and keep you moving in the right direction. So he says, uh, but the Holy Spirit, this is the verse I want you to memorize, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Now, when you listen to what happens when I allow the Holy Spirit to direct me, now he directs me, the question is, is will I walk in obedience? But if I do, here is the fruit that comes from that. I'm more loving. Let me ask you this morning, could you be more loving? The good news is I can always be more loving. I mean, there's times where I'm really loving. There's times where I'm not that good at loving. But I could always get better at loving. And love, the Bible says, never fails. Have you ever tried to extend love to somebody? And you may even thought it didn't work. You, give, you ever give a kid a hug and he's really, really angry at him? And you give him a hug and they're just stiffened up like a board. And you're going, I love you anyway. I'm going to give you a big hug. I don't care how much you hate it. <laughs> and you just give them this hug. And you walk away thinking, I don't know if that worked. But love never fails. See, for every minute that that kid bristled up and said, don't do this to me. When you continue to do it anyways, you instilled the principle in him that there is nothing that he can do that will turn away your love towards him. And that is a powerful statement. Do you know, I have a tough time being loving when I'm all tangled up with my issues. I don't know about you, but when I get tangled up with my issues, I'm not very loving. See, when I'm tangled up with my issues, it goes something like this. Here's my issues. It's overwhelming my life. And my spirit and all my wonderful wisdom is saying, I'm going to try to handle it my way. I'm going to do it like this. And then I handle it and I do all this stuff and it's not getting any better. And then when it's not getting better, I'm angry. And then I'm angry at me. And then I turn around and tell the Holy Spirit I'm angry with him because he didn't fix all this. And he's going, I'm trying to give you some guidance. You just don't want to walk in obedience to what I'm asking you to do. Because if you would do that, we, we would clean this up. And it would get better. But you and I have to trust that we really, really should work on the brakes first before we do the outside shell. Can I say it that way? But Holy Spirit, if I could just get it looking nice first, we'll worry about the brakes later. No, if you don't get the brakes right now, all this pretty stuff's going to get crunched up. You're going to have to fix it again. And the Holy Spirit says, I need you. To be more loving. I need you to be loving even when you don't feel like being loving. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need you to go in there and love on your husband when he hasn't done anything to mow the front yard or clean up like he said he was going to the last five weeks. <laughs> See, it's hard. It's hard sometimes. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. Love, joy, peace. How many of you would like two scoops of any one of those? All of them. I want more love. I want more peace, more joy. If I were to ask you the dilemma in the world we live in, 
Would, would you say that most of the people in the world that we live in that you're connected to struggle with love, joy, peace? How about unloving, unhappy, full of anxiety? See, that becomes a, a uh, indicator that they're walking and doing life according to their spirit and not the help of the Holy Spirit. And the great news is, is you're in the, in the garage and God's working on you and you want to sneak out of the garage and start doing things your way. And then it gets all messed up and then you come back in the garage and God goes, ah, let's fix the brakes. I'll still clean all this up and it'll be okay. And the more and more we listen to the Holy Spirit, our reliability and trustworthiness on his words, his counsel, grows. My confidence in his words, even when it makes no sense to me, grows. And then I begin to more securely walk in obedience to it. It goes on to say, uh, not only is there love, joy, and peace, but patience, kindness, goodness. How many of you have patience? <laughs> How many of you you're, you're impatient about me asking about patience. Uh, <laughs> patience, kindness, goodness. So this is what the Holy Spirit's going to direct you to do. Is there anything wrong with these? The Holy Spirit wants you to be loving. He wants you to be joyful. He wants you to be peaceful. He wants you to be patient. He wants you to be kind, uh, show kindness. He wants you to be, show goodness. Is there anything about those that you're going, yeah, I just don't want to do one of those? Not really. Honestly, on the inside, all of us would like to do better at all of those. But we have a tough time doing that. Then look at it. Not only that, he wants us to be a person of faithfulness, gentleness, and here's the big one, self-control. There is no law against any of these things, the Bible says. <laughs> There's nobody that's going to go, yeah, you really shouldn't. Uh, you know, be gentle. That's just not a good thing. <laughs> Nobody's going to say, yeah, just be faithful in relationships. You, you, be, you, you, you know, you don't have to be faithful. Just tell them whatever they want to hear and then just throw them to the curb. Nobody's going to give you that advice. So the point being is if I listen to the Holy Spirit and I let him give me counsel, that's what he's going to produce in me. And I think, you know what? I might be looking pretty good. If my wife seen me being loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentleness, and under self-control, I might look just a little more handsome to her. How many of you think that might work out for me? How many of you know that maybe my workplace will probably trust me more? How many of you know that I'll probably move up in the workplace? How many of you know that I'll probably end up running the place? Pretty soon. You see, we, we deal differently. We deal differently with the world because we have the Holy Spirit protecting and continuing the restoration process in you and I. And to close this morning, this last verse says, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. How can you be fearful to a life with more joy and less anxiety? There's nothing fearful about doing life the Holy Spirit's way. Instead, you received God's spirit, and when he adopted you as his own children, you are now adopted as his own children, and now you get to say, Father, you're the, the owner of my life. You've adopted me. I'm your kid, and, and I, you're so trustworthy. I know whatever it is you decide for me is what's best. And then it goes on to say, for his spirit, the Holy Spirit, our Father's uh, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Did you know that the Holy Spirit will tell you, you know what, you really are a child of God. Have you ever felt like God didn't like you? <laughs> Have you ever had a bad week and you're just going, oh man, I'm sure if I die this week and I go to heaven, it's like God, if I could just slip in on last week because it was better, I may not, I know I may not make it today. And the, the Holy Spirit says, no, 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 you don't get it. You don't get it. Oh, we already adopted you. We're not, we're not throwing you back. You might have had a tough week, and we fixed one of the breaks on your, on your life. But there's an, and the other one didn't work too well, and we, we had a little mishap. But, but you're still with us. We, we love you. 
and you still get to go to heaven. You know, the Holy Spirit will convince you and remind you you are a beloved child of the Most High God. And there are moments when you feel that. It is the most amazing thing in the world. You see, there's moments where I have a bad week and I go, I'm pretty sure God doesn't love me anymore. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit says, oh, no, 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 no. And he begins to remind me whose I am. And that God doesn't measure my performance to decide whether I'm his kid. I'm his kid. He wants to modify my performance because it, it hurts me and people around me. And he wants that to get better. But he doesn't kick me to the curb. And in that moment, I'm moving forward because of that truth. What happens if I don't believe that? Ah, God's given up on me anyways. I might as well go and raise hell all around me and make poor decisions because it just doesn't matter. You see, that's what would happen if I listened to my spirit. The Holy Spirit protects you and me, and he wants to remind you over and over, you've been purchased out of a junkyard. The restoration process has begun, and the Holy Spirit will protect you, but you need to listen to him and walk in obedience. And if you will, this is what will happen. You will start experiencing more love, more joy, more peace, more patience, more kindness, more faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Would you bow your heads this morning? Lord, we, we love you so much this morning. We are so grateful that you purposed God the Father to restore us. We're so grateful, Jesus, that you paid for the restoration process. And Holy Spirit, we're so grateful that you're going to protect what has started in us to completion. And we pray that you would give us the wisdom, Holy Spirit, to lean on you. That through each and every day, of Jesus said, you're our counselor, our comforter, and you do all those things that we would lean on you. And so this week, Holy Spirit... We want to lean on you, ask for more of your help and your guidance, and we pray that you give us the courage it'll take to walk in obedience to your direction, to the holy word of God. And when we do, we'll start experiencing more love, joy, peace, patience, guide, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so we pray for your help in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you enjoyed the message today and you want to partner with us to reach others for Christ, click the link down below to give now.